glad that you are glad to be here. Whether you're watching live or whether you come back and watch the replay, our prayer is that tonight's class will bless your life in such a strong and powerful and awesome way. We welcome you here and we are grateful to the Lord for your presence here. We're going to be talking about how to study the Bible tonight, where you start, uh, what book of the Bible do you start in, what type of Bible do you need? And so we want this to be a mighty blessing to you. Get ready to start off with our Bible trivia. You know, every week we test ourselves. So you make sure that you invite invite somebody that needs to grow in their knowledge of the word. And so I love you, family. Make sure you share and make sure you invite somebody that needs this experience, that needs this word tonight. We bless the Lord for your presence here tonight.
hope and I pray that you did very well. Listen, every week we start off with Bible trivia. Why? Because we want you to see where you are in the word of God. And so I pray that that was a testing of your skill and your level. Somebody say, I need to do better. I need to do better. Well, guess what? You're in the right place at the right time. If you felt that you did not understand uh, the order of those books or you couldn't give those answers as much as you wanted to, then guess what? You're in the right class because tonight's class is indeed about how to study the Bible, how to study the Bible. So we're going to be talking about the order of the books of the Bible. We're going to be talking about what kind of Bible do I get? We're going to be talking about where to start and how to understand each genre, each book, chapter, verse, and word. And so I hope you see exactly why the Lord has you here. And so just know that we welcome you. We praise the Lord for your presence. And all we want you to do is invite somebody else to come alongside of you and be in this class with you because we believe, we believe that this is a great and incredible way to study the word of God. And so we want you to get ready for an incredible uh, going through the Bible, running through the Bible, climbing through the Bible, doing everything we can do to get Bible inside of us. And so you know what we do every single solitary Wednesday. We like to start off not only with you hit and share, not only with you hearing the name of the person that the Lord wants to invite um, in particular, but we also want to pray for you. We want to lift up anything that's on your heart, anything that you feel is, is, is just bothering you from the day. Maybe something happened this morning and you need to give it to the Lord before we go into Bible class. Then guess what? That's why we pray every single time we come before you, whether we're live on Sundays, Monday through Friday, for the daily devotion or even these Wednesdays and Tuesday nights. And so come on, you post your prayer requests, anybody and anything you want us to pray for. We're going to lift it up with you. We're going to lift it up for you because we believe, we totally trust in the power of prayer. And so Father God, how we love you, how we need you, how we honor you and how we thank you tonight, God. We magnify your great name, Lord. We thank you that we made it through this week so far, that we've made it through this day, that our children made it to and fro schooled, and our grandchildren made it, that we made it to work, God. God, your hand has been with us. Your presence has been with us. Your faithfulness has been with us. And so for that, we say thank you. Now have your way tonight, God, as you teach us your Bible, as you teach us how to study your Bible, how to hide your word in our heart, God, how to make a difference in who we are and how we live. We love you, God, and we thank you now for the mighty word of Jesus. And let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Our God is good and our God is great. And we thank him for the mighty word of God and all that he gives for us to do. And so welcome. Do me a favor and find you two or three people on the screen and let them know that you're praying for Nikki in Chicago, that you're praying for Shelly in Minnesota, that you're praying for Kenya in California, that you're praying for Rosa in Paris and Kay and Rocky Red, where are you watching from? I, I would love to know. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Lisa Fire, thank you so much for being here. Hey, Tanya Abbott watching from Carson, California. Come on, could you put down for me where you're watching from, where you're studying from, and make sure you send an invitation invitation to your children, to those that you love, to those that you honor uh, the word of God, to be growing in the word of God with you. So bless his holy name tonight for his word. Listen, we are in the middle again of a great study of his word. As I said in the beginning, we're talking about how to study the word of God. This is where we started on last week. And one of the things that we looked at is we said we wanted to know why was it important to have a powerful relationship with the word of God. When we took a look at why we needed that powerful relationship, what the word meant to us, how God wanted to bless us in his word, we saw in such an incredible way how God would bless us 
um, tremendously, just absolutely tremendously through what he gives us in his word. And so I bless him now um, for everything that you and I get to get out of this word, for everything that we get to gain from the word. And on last week, what we talked about was that you either love the word of God or you don't. You either strive to grow in it or you don't. It either means everything to you or it means nothing to you. You cannot be lukewarm. You cannot be in the middle. You have have to make up your mind that you believe that there is life in the word and you want the life that's in the word and you want to be one of the ones out there who's able to rightly divide the word of God. And so we bless the Lord for all of you that are here and for all of you that wanted to be here. And so thank you so much um, that you trust the word of God, that you trust the place that God wants to have in your life through his word. And so I'm grateful for your presence here and I'm grateful for all that the Lord has for us tonight. Listen, I want you to get your Bibles out and I want you to get your notebooks because we're going to be taking a lot of notes tonight on exactly how we study the Bible. Now, we studied a lot of scriptures about that relationship and I don't want to use up all of our time. And so I definitely want you to go back and watch last week's class. If you missed it, make sure that you go back and you get it. Rosa said that I love the word of God. I, is she by herself? Is there anybody else that say, I love the word of God. I love the word of God. Come on. I, I believe that you should. And I hope that you do. Um, come on, somebody. I, I trust the Lord of God tonight that it makes all the difference in the world. What are your study habits now? I want you to type that in your comments for me exactly. How do you study? Do you study once a week? Do you study at the beginning of the week? Do you study every day? How does reading the Bible compare to studying the Bible? I want you to type down the answer to one of those questions for you based on where you are. How do you study the Bible? How do you study the Bible? What is your study habit? You know, if you were studying to get certified, to get your degree, to, to finish your master's or your dissertation, you would take notes, you would have index cards, you would have highlighters and pens, you would have study groups, perhaps a study partner, you would have a system. You would not just be out here doing everything haphazard. There would be a method to the way that you study the Bible. So I want somebody to be honest with me tonight and tell me how are are your study habits now? Are they good? Are they great? Do they need improving? Do you study daily? Do you hide the word in your heart? Because listen, the only way you're going to grow in the word is to have a strong relationship. Kenya said, I study twice a week, twice a week. Come on, somebody else tell me. Thank you, Kenya, for your honesty. Is there anybody else that says, I have a system? I make sure that I, I'm in Sunday school. I make sure that Bible class is a priority to me. I make sure that when the preacher preaches a sermon on Sunday, that I take that scripture and I begin to work that scripture in my life and I begin to live it out. Uh, Marshita said, I study uh, a few times a day. Shelly said, I study daily. Rocky said, I'm going to be honest with you. She said uh, that I, I is my study habits are poor, but I will start to study. Amen. 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 That's what I'm talking about. Nikki said, unfortunately, I'm reading for the most part and for, for words that I don't understand. I look up the meeting. I definitely can be better. Nikki, thank you for your honesty. Nikki in Chicago is right with now, this is a wife, this is a mother, this is a nurse, professional, full-time job, a lot of pressures pulling at her from every which way. And this is where a lot of us find ourselves. But here's the thing, you got to make time in the word of God. Listen, if this is a, a uh, deliberate place in your life, I dare you right now to set an alarm for 6.07, whatever your time zone is, set an alarm for you to be here in Bible class every Wednesday. Set an alarm for you to wake up and call in for Sunday school. Begin to get you a notebook that's just for Bible study. I want you to write down some of the resources that we give you tonight so that you can be aware of them. Sherry said, I study five times a week. Wow. Amen. Uh, that's amazing, Sherry. Good job. Uh, Nike said that daily... She says, um, super early a.m. when my mind is fresh and a quiet place with my tea. Come on, somebody. Demita said, I study uh, not every day. Um, she said, not every day. Sometimes, I think you left the number out. Uh, how many times a day? Amen. Amen. Listen, the truth is what sets us free. So we have to decide where we are in it 
to compare to where we want. Now, tonight's class is a two-parter. I wish I could get to all of it tonight, but it's going to take two parts for us to get it all out. And so I want to go to the second part. How, what's the difference between reading the Bible compared to studying the Bible? Somebody type that answer for me. What's the difference? If I make a decision that I'm going to study the Bible, how is that different from me reading the Bible? If I open up my Bible every day and I make up my mind that this is what I'm going to get into, then what is the difference between me reading the Bible and me studying the Bible? Somebody type what the difference is for me. I want to know how is that different for you? When, when you read the Bible, do you make sure that the atmosphere is right? Do you make sure that you ship the atmosphere? Do you make sure that there's a quiet place where you can be focused, where you can be still, where it can just be you and God. When you study the Bible, do you underline? Do you highlight? I think it was, um, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Nikki who said that she looks up. Do you look up the words that you don't understand, that you don't? Come on, what's the difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. I want, I want some honesty. I want some people who will give me what their honest answer is on studying the Bible. Come on. Um, Florence said, I need to get back into reading the Bible. Listen, we, we talked about it last week, Florence, it's your weapon. And without a weapon, the enemy will whoop you upside the right side and down the left because he knows those who have no ability to yield the weapon. We looked at Ephesians chapter six last week and how the word of God is our sword. And if we don't know how to cut it and we don't know how to slice and we don't know how to dice, the enemy will get us every time. But when I make up my mind that he's not winning with me. When I make up my mind that I'm going to get the victory, when I make up my mind that this is my desire right now, that the Lord is going to be the one to get my life, then it makes all the difference in the world. Listen, listen at this scripture here that it reads. It says, you accepted the word, not as the word of men, but as it really is the word of God. You accepted it. This is First Thessalonians chapter two. You accepted the word. Listen, when you and I accept the word, you see how the, these pages are hugging this woman. This is how the word of God ought to do you. This is how you ought to embrace the word. This is how you ought to pick up that Bible and want it to wrap itself around you when you're going to bed. And when you wake up in the morning, I tell you guys all the time that people ask me, Pastor Dawn, why don't you just do the devotion? Make maybe once or twice a week and then just do Sundays now that everybody is online. Well, those of you who've been rocking with us for a long time know that we've been doing this every day for 14 years and we do it because it's needed every day. The devil doesn't take a break from whooping your behind. And so we don't want you to take a break from getting your behind in the Bible. Come on, somebody, somebody say, get your behind in the Bible, get your behind in the Bible. Uh, Shelly says studying is to focus. Amen. You can, you can focus. I definitely, it could be part of it. Uh, Kenya said reading doesn't give you full of understanding of what's going on. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sherry says studying is to understand the word of God. There you go. It is the, what the Bible calls that rightly dividing. When I get into that word of God, I believe that it is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine and reproof and correction and for instruction in righteousness. I'm getting into the word because I want the word to get into me. I I want it to correct me. I want it to instruct me. I want it to be profitable to my life. Why? Because I believe that the word of God is living and powerful. It's sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of thoughts and the intents of her heart. Well, Pastor Dawn, I, I already read uh, uh, that chapter. I already know that book. Well, well, listen, you can never read the word of God too much and because it's alive and it's powerful and you ought to get into it again and again and again and again. Listen to this word here. Here are some of the life-changing reasons to study the word of God. It's not just a good ideal, but it's a God ideal. It's a not just a good ideal, but it's a God ideal based on what we just read from 
2 Timothy 3, 16 and 2 Timothy 2. If I believe that it's a God ideal, I'm not just going to read the Bible. I'm going to study to show myself approve unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me say that one more time, because there are people who read the word of God that don't know how to divide the word of God, that don't know how to apply the word of God, that don't know how to teach the word of God, that don't know the meaning of the word of God. So what they do is they wrongly divide. And then they tell people that the Bible says stuff that it never said, that they tell people that this scripture means something that it never meant. But listen, when you can rightly divide the word of God, you are studying the word of God and you don't need to be ashamed because you're a workman. I want you to underline that word in second Timothy chapter two in your Bible. You are a workman. Come on. If you didn't go get your pens and your highlighters, you go get them now because I want you underlining and highlighting in your Bible. Come on, go get your pens and go get your, your, your highlighters because that's how you study the word of God. Come on. I'm going to give you a second. I, I'm getting, I wanted to bring a couple of my Bibles to the table tonight and I wanted to bring those so I can show them to you guys because I wanted to have these here because you, as you grow in different seasons, you have different Bibles that come along with you that, that mean different things to you. And so I want you guys to, to, to underline and write in your Bible. It's your weapon. It's your tool. So you make sure you don't treat it like it's something in a museum. You treat it like you trying to wear it out. You treat it like you want God to get all over you with that Bible. And you want that Bible to get all over your mind and all over your heart and all over your life. Why? Because it's everything to you. It's everything to you. The Bible says here in Psalm 119 verse 11, according to number two, the word of God, it's going to help me avoid sin. And it's a light for my path. We talked about that earlier. Thy word I have hid in my heart, Lord. Thy word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. If I don't have the word of God, if all I have is a good gospel song, if all I have is, is a good quote from the pastor, if I have no knowledge of the word of God, there's nothing for me to hide in my heart. There's nothing to keep me strong. Wrong. There's nothing to keep me righteous. There's nothing to keep me holy. But when I allow that word to be what order my steps, if you didn't hear our word today on order steps, go back and watch this morning's devotion. Because listen, if you don't get number two down in your soul, that it's going to help you not sin, then you won't commit to it. Number three, it gives you wisdom, faith, salvation and examples. When I think that I'm the only one that has gone through something, when I think that I'm the only one suffering, when I think that I'm the only one that's ever been in a lion's den, when I think that I'm the only one that's ever been in a fiery furnace, when I think that I'm the only one that had to take the long way around, when I think like Jonah, we learned about Jonah this morning. If I think that I'm the only one that has ever been disobedient to God and ran somewhere that God didn't want me to be, then I won't understand that it's part of knowing the word of God. These are life-changing reasons to study the word of God. I want you to make a note of this, the version Bible app. You see that Bible app right there in the middle of the page? There are hundreds of versions in dozens of language and audio Bible. You want to have this on your cell phone, on your tablet, on your computer. It should be a regular resource for you. And again, I, I believe in having a good old paper Bible. This is what I got up to go get because I I do want you guys, I, I got my women of faith Bible. I get my, got my regular NIV Bible. I have my uh, couples Bible right here. Um, and, and, so, and all of these Bibles serve different purposes based on what they highlight and how I study from each one. And at different points in my life, I got these Bibles for different reasons. You want to have different Bibles in your life for different reasons as well. But this you version is priceless to you because it gives you different translations of the Bible. Let's talk about some of these translations because I get asked all the time when it comes to studying the word of God, which Bible should I get and which Bible should I have? Well, look at all these different ones. There's the new, um, American Standard Bible, and Bibles are known by their abbreviations. So those abbreviations that you see going down the left side, the NASB, the 
AMP, AMP is the Amplified Bible, the ESV, the English Standard Bible, the KJV, the King James Version Bible. Now, let me just pause right there with King James Version, because some of you think that the King James Version is the original Bible, and you think that that's the only Bible you should use. But key word is version. It is a version of the Bible. It is a translation back from 1611. And a lot of words have changed in definition. A lot of words have changed in meaning. And we need something that speaks to us the way we live right now today. If I only hear something from the 1600s, that's why a lot of people don't read the King James Bible. They say, I can't understand it. So you have to get you a translation that you can understand. Some of my favorite translations, especially for new believers, I love like the uh, CEV, which is the contemporary temporary English version. I love the living Bible. I love the NIV Bible, but I love when you have multiple versions. I love multiple versions and I love the message Bible. Now I would not necessarily teach out of a common English version because sometimes common English versions were literally, um, uh, they were translated in a way where sometimes the meaning is not in this fullness. That's one of the powers of different websites. And I'm gonna give you some of those websites later on. Uh, but but so in fact, let me give you those websites now because I, I want you to have that um, because some of those websites that are available, like uh, Bible Gateway, write that down, Bible Gateway, powerful, powerful website uh, for you to know. These websites are priceless to you. They're, they're online Bible study websites. I wish that these uh, websites were available when I was in seminary. I wish these Bible uh, sites were available when I was first coming up in the Word because it could have changed a whole lot of stuff, especially my pocket. But BibleGateway.com, Bible Hub hub.com, biblestudytools.com. I'm going to come back to this, but I just wanted to show you these because these, these websites allow you access. They give you access to a lot of different versions of the Bible and they are priceless to you. And so they mean everything for you to use these versions and use these Bible tools because like on biblegateway.com, you can literally line up four or five different versions of the Bible together and study them all together. And it helps you tremendously. It helps you tremendously. And, and why do you need the help? Because look at this next picture here. It says, do you look for Bible teachers who just preach what you want to hear? Or do you look for real teachers who preach the truth, even if it disagrees with what you believe? Those of you who've been rocking with me for a long time, you know that one of my favorite sayings is, where is that at in the Bible? Where is that at in the Bible? When somebody is going to teach me something, I want it to be sound teaching. Somebody tell me, where is this scripture that I put here on the Bible, where, uh, on the bottom, where it says the time will come? Well, they will not endure sound doctrine. How will you know whether or not your pastor, the Bible teacher, the person who hit live, the person on Instagram and TikTok, how will you know that they're giving you sound doctrine if you don't have a strong relationship with Bible study? It says the time will come where after their own lust, they're going to heap for themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Where is this scripture at in the Bible? I started to put it down on the screen for you, but because it's Bible class, I want you guys to show me where this is in the Bible, because you can't just have teachers that 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 tickle your flesh and, and tickle and scratch your ears. You want teachers that convict your spirit. You want teachers that make you stop cussing and make you stop lying. You want teachers that tell you, you know what? After that class, I think I'm going to end the affair. After that class, I'm going to refile my taxes. After that class, Class right there, I'm about to start serving and I'm about to start giving. After that class right there, I realize that I'm obnoxious. I'm obnoxious. After that class right now, I realize I have a haughty spirit and a foul attitude. I, I realize I'm not a good wife and I'm not a good husband. I realize I'm a rotten caregiver and a horrible son. The, the word of God should be such truth that it may not be what you want to hear. 
but it is what you need to hear. Somebody say, give me what I need. Give me what I need. Give me what I need. Thank you, Shelly. Second Timothy four and three. You have to know when you, just because you're in a ministry and you start to see people leaving that ministry, you start to see people trying to find another teacher. I, I don't like his teaching and he a little too rough and she a little too boring. Is there truth? Is there life transformation? Am I growing? Is there a seed coming down in my soul where a harvest of righteousness can grow. That's the kind of teaching I want to hear. Somebody say, that's the kind of teaching that I want to hear. This is what you need. Now let's get into the Bible itself, because when it comes to the Bible, there are 66 books, 66 books of the Bible that are written by 40 authors over 1500 years to give us one message. There are 66 books written by 40 authors. I want you to write that down on the inside cover of your Bible so you can remember it. The reason why I wanted to show you this picture of these books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation sitting on this bookshelf because the Bible is not necessarily like one book. The Bible is like you holding a library. Somebody say, I'm holding a library. That's what I'm doing. I'm holding a library. When I hold this book, it looked like one book, but baby, there are 66 books books in here. And so when I take out one book and I read another book and I grow by this other book, it's like I have a library in my pocket and in my purse and on my dashboard and coming to work with me and, and, and walking with me and talking with me day in and day out. Why? Because it's a library. There's not just one person that wrote our Bible. There are 40 plus different authors. Somebody write 40. Why is that important? Because 40 authors over 1500 years, they didn't write our Bible in two years. Come on, somebody. I don't want a book that only one person wrote. Uh, you know, I asked many Jehovah Witnesses or, or many different Mormons or people in other religions, how do you give your whole life to something one man one man said was right in one year of his life. Do you know there are religions out there that believe that their founder was hit over the head by a rock and got the revelation of the word? There are people who said, well, he went over there to the river and then, then this thing floated. And when it floated over to him, this is how he got to listen. That's not Bible. I need somebody that teaches me all 66 books. I don't want somebody that's afraid of the Old Testament and afraid of revelations. I, I don't want somebody that only preaches out of one gospel. I don't want somebody that never teaches me prophecy. I, I don't want anybody that doesn't teach me church history. I want somebody to take me into the Paul's letters and take me into the biography of Jesus and take me into the, the epistles of Peter and the epistles of John. I want somebody that teaches me about the rapture and teaches me that we serve a Jesus that's coming back again. I want somebody that tells me about creation in the beginning. I, I want somebody that, that can tell me about Israel coming out of Egypt. I, I want somebody that can take me through all 66 books. Listen, here's the breakdown of the Bible. Listen, we're talking about how to study. Pastor Dawn, I thought you were going to I am teaching you how to study, but you got to know what you're studying. There's the Old Testament. There are 39 books in the Old Testament and there are 27 books in the New Testament. Write that down in your table of contents. Write that down in your table of contents. Now look at this breakdown in the Old Testament in the blue. In the blue, we have five books of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Why do I need to know that those are books of the law? Because if you start reading to me something from Leviticus, if you start reading something to me from Deuteronomy and you say it is a lifestyle that I must adopt now, that I have to go out there and, and slay a lamb and kill a bull and put blood um, from this the lamb and that lamb, da, 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 da. You're reading to me from the law and I need to be aware of where you're reading from me. History, Joshua. Well, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Pastor Don, why are you leaving this on the screen so much? Because what was our trivia today? When you took our trivia, it asked you which book came after which book. Why am I giving this to you now? Because this week, these next seven days, until we come back next week, I want you learning the books of the Bible. 
learning the books of the Bible. You know, see if you can learn five the first day and then see if you can learn like maybe 10 the next day and then see if you can get all the way up to 15 different books the day after that. I want you so into that book, the word of God, that it means everything to you, that you're learning exactly what the poetry books are. Job, Psalms, Old Testament in the blue. In the blue, we have five books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Why do I need to know that those are books of the law? Because if you start reading to me something from Leviticus, if you start reading something to me from Deuteronomy and you say it is a lifestyle that I must adopt now, that I have to go out there and, and slay a lamb and kill a bull and put blood um, from this the lamb and that lamb, da, 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 da. you're reading to me from the law. And I need to be aware of where you're reading from me. History, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Pastor Don, why are you leaving? down in the Old Testament in the blue. In the blue, we have five books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Why do I need to know that those are books of the law? Because if you start reading to me something from Leviticus, if you start reading something to me from Deuteronomy and you say it is a lifestyle that I must adopt now, that I have to go out there and, and slay a lamb and kill a bull and put blood um, from this the lamb and that lamb, da, 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 da. you're reading to me from the law and I need to be aware of where you're reading from me. History, Joshua, well, Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Pastor Don, why are you leaving this on the screen so much? Because what was our trivia today? When you took our trivia, it asked you which book came after which book. Why am I giving this to you now? Because this week, these next seven days, until we come back next week, I want you learning the books of the Bible. Learning the books of the Bible, you know, see if you can learn five the first day and then see if you can learn like maybe 10 the next day and then see if you can get all the way up to 15 different books the day after that. I want you so into that book, the word of God, that it means everything to you, that you're learning exactly what the poetry books are, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, and Son of Solomon. Why? Because it's going to change you. It's going to change you as you know what you read, as you know what it says, as you're able to say this word is alive. Then you know the prophets, the major prophets from the minor prophets, major prophets from minor. Now remember, major are not called major because they are more important. They're called major because they are longer. They are called the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, because they are longer, not because they're more important. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi are just as important. They're just shorter. They're just shorter. Why do I want you to have this? Because maybe all your life you heard somebody read something out of the Bible, but it didn't quite click to you why they were saying you didn't need to do it now. It didn't quite click to you why they were saying to you it makes a difference in your life now because that was law, because that was poetry. You don't take something that you read in the book of Psalms and say, oh, okay, well, this said that this bear came out the woods and it ate up the children. And so that's what I believe. I need to go get me a bear and have this bear eat up all these kids. No, that was poetry that you were reading. 
And you need to know that. You need to know that. So that's important. Looking back now at the New Testament, 27 books of the New Testament. You have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What, what does Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have in common? The Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What do they have in common? If 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 I was trying to tell somebody um, what what all four books do, what would my answer be? This is the answer to what all four books: Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What do all four books do? Come on, somebody. This is Bible class. We're in this class. For those of you who come in, came in late, let me just let you know what tonight's class is. It's how to study the Bible. What kind of Bible? Where do I start? How do I understand? This is what we're on the part now, how to understand each genre of the Bible. And this is when we, when we say genres, we're talking about the law, the history, the poetry, the prophets, the gospels. Come on, somebody. What is the difference here? Um, let's see. Nikki said to tell the account of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Alfreda said to tell the purpose of the life of Jesus. Come on. There you go. There you go. They're telling us the account of Jesus. They're giving us the same story from four different points of views. And so a lot of people will say, well, didn't I read this already in another book? Yes, because it's giving you the same story from four different points of views. Now for the Bible students that are brand new, let's help our, our, our new students. Come on, some of you who've been in Bible class for a, a while, out of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who were the disciples? Who were the disciples out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Which were disciples. Come on, somebody. Which were disciples? Thank you. Pooh said they're giving us four different perspectives, four different perspectives. There you go. Joy said they're teaching us Jesus, his coming, his teaching, his person. They're giving us the same story about Jesus, our Christ, his life, when he came, how he came, Four different perspectives, four different perspectives. Great, incredible uh, word there, Pooh. Perspectives, perspectives. Which of the gospels were written by disciples? All right, Kenya got one. Matthew is one of them. Who's the other one? Who's the other one? Come on. Who, which one of the disciples, which one of the gospels were written by? Because see, when, when you first come in, you could be fooled into thinking that all four are disciples. But if Matthew is one, who was another one? There you go, Nikki. John is the other one. Matthew and John are the only two that were disciples. Matthew and John are the only two that were disciples. Mark and Luke, that's your homework. I want you to use your first homework is to study the books of the Bible in order. I want you to be able to learn as many of the books. It might take you a couple of weeks, but I want you to study the books of the Bible so you can learn all 66 books. So when you take that trivia again, you'll know what comes after what. But I also want you to tell me where did Mark get his account and where did Luke get his account? So your homework, somebody type that on the screen for me. Your homework is to tell me if Matthew and John where the two that were disciples, they got their stories firsthand. They were walking with Jesus. They they saw him feed the multitude. They saw him turn the water into wine. John can tell you, I was right there at Calvary. I saw him die for our sins. I was right there watching it. Firsthand account. Who told Mark and who told Luke their accounts? That's your homework. And so I want you guys to, to, to look through, look over that. And I want you to come back next week with an answer for that. Now, after the gospels, we have what's called history, Acts. It tells us how the church started. After the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, I have the book of Acts teaching me and training me uh, exactly how the church first got started, what they did, what were some of the things they encountered, how they overcame fear, uh, exactly what they did uh, to, to spread the gospel, to, to overcome doubt and the naysayers. And so the book of Acts should absolutely be something that's paramount in your soul. Then you go to the Pauline letters, the Pauline letters, all the ones in yellow, are all the letters written by the apostle Paul. So it's important for you to see that. Paul wrote Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Pastor Don, why is this important that I read these letters? Why is it important that I read these letters? Because if I take something 
that was written in a letter. Let me give you an example. If I write a letter to Nikki in Chicago and I say, Nikki tells me something is going on in her church and she says something to me like, you know what? Um, there's these women, they all wear blue jeans to church every Monday night and they're starting a lot of ruckus with some of the things they're falsely teaching. And I said to her, tell the women who wear blue jeans don't teach anymore. I don't want, I don't want those women. Now she has educated me that these women who wear these blue jeans are misleading the flock. And I write her a letter that says, tell those women in blue jeans, don't teach anymore. Somebody could come along 2000 years from now and say, Pastor Don was a great Bible teacher. I hope they do. Uh, but, but here's the thing. They, they could say, Pastor Don, she was right on the word. She got her word directly from the Holy Spirit. And if she said we shouldn't wear blue jeans and that people who wear blue jeans shouldn't teach the Bible. But, but I was talking to Nikki about a situation that was going on in the church that she wrote me about. I was not establishing a doctrine. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Somebody better hear me through in between. I'm trying not to stray away from what I'm trying to teach you. You cannot take something that you read in a letter. Some of it is doctrinal, not all of it. And you got to study the letters, study the, the geography, study the culture, study what was being addressed, who wrote the letter. These are some of the things you need to know before you start saying this is the law of God. This is the doctrine of God. This is what we need to do right now. And so I just wanted you guys to be aware. You go through the general letters to finish out the um, the New Testament of Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. Listen, don't have a book of the Bible that you are afraid of. Don't have a book of the Bible that you avoid. Don't have a book of the Bible that you never go into because you sit at a church that never tells you about James, that never preaches 1st, 2nd, or 3rd John, that never dives into what is said in Philemon. You want a a church, you want a Bible teacher, and you want to be a student that goes completely into the word of God. Now, listen, how do I start to read the Bible? How do I start to read the Bible? This is my suggestion. This is not like a uh, set in stone. This is not something everybody has to do. This is what I like to recommend to people who are new to Bible study. I say, start in the gospel of Mark. So you can learn who Jesus is. Mark tells his story in a very matter of fact. This happened, this happened, this happened. This happened, this happened, this happened. And so for somebody that's really just trying to learn the walk of Jesus, learn the miracles of Jesus, learn the heart of Jesus, I tell them start with Jesus, start with Jesus. Then I tell them go to the gospel of John. I like them to have two perspectives because Mark got his story I was about to tell you the answer. I almost forgot that was your homework. And John got his story firsthand. Now, the difference, and, and, and let me see here if I can get some real Bible students who get their thinking cap. Y'all got your thinking cap on right now. How does John start his gospel? He starts his account of the life of Jesus that is different from every other gospel writer. How does he start his account of Jesus in a different way? that's totally different from the way that other gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they start out, um, I'm trying not to give you the answer. They start out uh, talking about a certain time, a certain city, a certain occurrence that was going on. John completely starts his gospel differently. Pastor Don, I don't like all this stuff you teach. And I, I, I just wanted you to tell me uh, exactly how to read. I am telling you how to study the Bible. I'm right in it. I'm right in it. I'm just asking you to come on the journey with me. I know you like to shout and I know you like to dance and I know you like to cry and I know you like to run around the church, but sometimes you got to sit down and study. Sometimes you got to sit down and read. Sometimes you got to sit down and learn what's different. Pooh said he, he talks about Jesus died on a different day. Nope, 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 not it. 
Um, Nikki said uh, gene genealogy. Nope, not different. Or or maybe he didn't have gene. Maybe you're saying he didn't have genealogy. Could be that. Could be that. But his is totally different. And so it's not what Pooh is saying. It's not what Nikki is saying. But thank you for guessing. Listen, Bible class is the place where you take your guess. Don't sit here and say, I don't know. So I'm not going to type anything. Joyce says he shows us that Jesus was in the beginning. You better come through, Joyce. That's what I'm talking about. Whereas Matthew, Mark, and Luke say, let's take you to Bethlehem. Let's tell you about the wise men. Let's tell you about, there are no stars. There, there is no wise men. There is no manger. There, there's no Christmas story whatsoever. John said, let me take you all the way to the beginning. Let me tell you that before there was a Bethlehem, let me tell you before there was a king. Let me tell you that before there was some sheep, before any of that, before there was a Joseph and before there was a Mary, there was Jesus. Because John said, I want to take you all the way back until you realize that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He said, I want you to know before there was anything, there was Jesus. He said, my story is different. My story is different. He says, Matthew, in fact, we're going we're gonna to start here next week. I almost started to tell y'all, each gospel gives you four different perspectives of who Jesus is, four different perspectives of who Jesus is. And I'm just giving you this so that you can be in awe of how deep the word is. Because if you just thought that all four told the same story, if you, and, and, and let me give you an example. What are you talking about, Pastor Don? It, it, as, a, as a woman, I am Don the pastor, I am Dawn the daughter, I am Dawn the mother, and I am Dawn a sister, okay? So if you wrote, if somebody wrote a letter about me, Dawn the pastor, you would only know this much about me. You would only know this much about me. Now, they may tell you something I did, just like somebody else told you something I did, but that person writing from the perspective that I'm a pastor, they're trying to get you to understand my pastoral heart. Come on, somebody say there's a gospel writer that wanted to, you to understand that Jesus was the servant of God, said that Jesus was the servant of God. Now, the person writing as Don, the daughter, they they may want to tell you how I was as a little girl. They may want to tell you how I was as a teenager. They may want to tell you when I used to live at Washburn and used to put milk crates up and stand behind the milk crates in 1976 and say, one day I'm going to be a preacher. Didn't make any sense to me then because there were no women preachers in 19. 1976 when I was standing behind the milk crates, but somebody would tell you the story because they would say, here's another perspective of who she is. And so when they tell their story, when they write their book about me, they're teaching you about Dawn, the daughter, somebody else teaching you about mom, Dawn, the mama may say, well, let me tell you about Christian. And let me tell you about Antonio. And let me tell you about Angelo, by the way, my twin's birthday tomorrow. God bless them. Love you boys. And somebody may say, let me tell you about London. They tell you who I am as a mother, which is different from who I am as a daughter, which is different from who I am as a pastor. And then somebody else may say, let me tell you about Dawn, the wife. This is how she was as a wife, or this is how she was as a daughter. So all of these different roles that I play, all of these different ways that people know me, all of these different perspectives that they have about me, none of them are my whole story. It's just a part. John says at the end of his gospel, and somebody put it on the page for me, it says there's so much written. What's the scripture that says there's so much written? No, let me say it right. There's so much that Jesus did that's not included in the Bible. Somebody put that on the page for me because I want somebody to understand you are never going to have the whole story until you and I see Jesus face to face. We will never know everything he did. We will know, never know every miracle that he wrought. We will never know every single word that he said. Why? Because there's so much that he did that's not even in the Bible. And so when you sit up and you say, he coming back on this day, he coming back at this 
this time. He definitely said this on the cross. He definitely didn't say that. No, you only know what's in the Bible. You don't know what they left out the Bible. That's just like the person writing to you about me. If they don't know, if they only gave you the pastor and they only gave you the mama and they only gave you the daughter and they only gave you the wife, you still don't know me as friend. You don't know what it was like when I used to go skating. You don't know what it was like when I used to draw or when I used to paint or when I used to do calligraphy. You don't know what it was like when I used to work at LA Fitness because they gave you this portion of me. And so when you sit there and you try to say you would cornered the market on Dawn, don't nobody know everything about Dawn. And if don't nobody know everything about Dawn, do you think somebody know everything about Jesus? Come on, somebody. Thank you, Liz. Hey, Liz, Allison, my girl, my girl, John 21, 25. Thank you, Shelly, for typing it on the screen for us. She said, and there are many other things that Jesus did, with which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So you can't sit up and say, I have the market cornered on Jesus. Baby, he is infinite. Baby, he is omniscient. Baby, he is omnipotent. I'm telling you right now that nobody has the market cornered on Jesus. This is what makes us come and learn how to study the Bible. Listen, that's part one. Are you coming back next week for part two? I pray that you are. I pray that you find wealth. I pray that you find value. I pray that you say, this is blessing me and I want to learn Jesus. Let me finish with this last uh, slide that we have on the screen so you guys can remember what the homework is. After I tell people to go to the book of John, I see, you see where it says, inspire the Psalms daily. I, could, I tell people to read a little bit of the Psalms daily. Read Psalms before you're about to pray. Read Psalms when you find yourself in a storm. Read Psalms when you find yourself about to go and worship. Psalms will inspire your worship, your praise, your connection to God. After they go to Mark, after they go to John, after they're reading a couple of the Psalms daily, I tell them what I want you to do is I want you to read then the book of Acts, the book of Acts. You see that book of Acts on that screen right there in the middle with the fire? Because now that you know the story, now listen, when I tell them to read Mark and John, I'm not telling them to skip Matthew and Luke. I'm, this is for a person that's starting this is for a person that's starting. Somebody say, this isn't all, this is the start. What does it say? Where do I start reading? Not where I finish, where do I start? So Mark, John, Psalms, the book of Acts. I want them to read the book of Acts because they need to know what the Holy Spirit does down on the inside. They need to know how the Holy Spirit leads and guides. They, they need to know how the Holy Spirit speaks and teaches. They, they need to know who he is, that he's an ever-present help, ever-present help. So they need the Holy Spirit and knowledge of him in the book of Acts. Then I tell them to go to the book of Romans because I want you to see what happened when people who weren't Jewish came to believe in God. I want you to see what Paul's um, teaching to them, what his correction was to them. When, when he told them that, listen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. They had this Greek mindset, this Roman, um, they had this Roman mindset. They had this soldier mindset. So when he's talking to them about that, he's talking them to them with the backdrop of Rome. Rome is the backdrop of the entire New Testament, but especially the letter to the Romans. He's talking to them in light of where you live and in light of where you came from and in light of all the idols and in light of how you've been told to worship Caesar and all of this other stuff. Let me tell you about Jesus. This is like America. It's like America. So I tell new believers, once you finish a couple of the gospels, you still reading on Psalms daily. Then you go to the book of Acts. Then you go to the Romans. Then you start with the letters of Paul. You start with those letters of Paul. And I tell them as you're reading through the letters of Paul, now Romans, of course, is a letter of Paul, but you start with the rest of the letters and you almost can't go wrong. If you're reading Ephesians, it's going to help you with your life, with your walk, with your heart, with your mouth, with your attitude. As you go into the general epistles, you start to read Hebrews and James and first and second John, you get a whole new insight on Peter. Peter is more than the man who denied Jesus. Read first Peter and second Peter and see how your mind opens up about who he is and how he is. Then what you do after that is you then go to Genesis because you want to know the foundation. You want to know the creation. This is what I want you all to do 
um, and, and write this down, screenshot this if you want to. I hope, I really hope with all my heart, and all my soul that this is blessing you. I hope that as I talked about the different books of the Bible, that, that you begin to remember that your homework is you're going to remember, begin to memorize the book. So you can say Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. And so you can say them and you break them down and you make up your mind on, on this day, I'm going to learn this five. So tomorrow, just learn the first five. Then the next day, add in the next five. And then the next day, add in the next five. I want the whole library of that, which is the Bible, to begin to get down in your soul. So when people are talking to you from the book of Ezekiel and people are talking to you from the book of Jeremiah, you say, I remember that's a prophetic book. This is prophecy. And, and, and when I read Jonah and when I read Acts and when I read Titus and I know what I am reading and it makes it the difference to you. I want you to surround yourself with Bible teachers that preach the truth, not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Don't heap upon yourself somebody because your ears are itching and you want to hear about prosperity and you want to hear about supernatural debt cancellation and you want to hear that you next in line. You can tell me all of that, but can you make sure I know the word of God too? Can you make sure I know Bible? Can you make sure I know the difference between Genesis and Revelation? Can you tell me that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are telling me the same story in different ways? Can you teach me the rest of the Bible to get you a Bible? Get you a Bible and get you a Bible that that speaks to you the way you are. Remember what I told you. Now, these are I, I don't even know how many Bibles. I don't know how many Bibles I have, but you know what I know? I know that they all are fire to me. I know that they all are life to me. I know that they all are everything to me. And I want you to get a Bible in a translation that makes sense to you. And then I want you to make sure you download on your phone or your iPad the U version. So you'll have all the translations so that you'll be able to go translation to translation, book by book, learning the different books of the Bible. I want this to mean everything to you and I want it to be a blessing to you. I, I want you to be able to say, I, I know how to go to these Bible websites now. I, I took a look at Bible Gateway. I took a look at Bible Hub. I went to BibleStudyTools.com. You say, Pastor Dawn, but how much do I need to do? How much do you want? How much do you want? Because how much you need to do is based on how bad do you want it? Remember all of the reasons that are, are life-changing reasons to study the Bible, because it's not just a good idea, but it's a God idea. It helps you and I to avoid sin. It's light for our path. It provides us with wisdom, wisdom, the instruction that we need, the understanding that we need. It gives us faith. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I'm listening to somebody who's preaching or teaching and they're not preaching or teaching the word of God, then they're not building my faith. These are life changing reasons to study the word of God. My prayer my hope is that you say the word of God is living and powerful, that it is sharper than a double-edged sword. It is the weapon that I fight with. It is the way that I taste and see that the Lord is good. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction, instruction, and righteousness. It's everything to me. And that's why Bible class, and that's why Sunday school, and that's why just my own personal study means everything. Why? Because I want to get to the place where I accept the word of God, not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God. I want the word of God to wrap itself around me. Somebody say, hold me, word of God. Hold me. Anybody want to be rocked by the word of God? Anybody want to be comforted by the word of God? Anybody want to be kept by the word of God? Anybody want to be instructed and protected by the word of God? Anybody want to be built up by the word? Wrap your arms around me, Holy Ghost. Through the word of God, 
It should be everything. I, I need you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine that word and, and the experience of you going deeper. Pastor Dawn, I thought I knew enough. I thought I studied enough. But what if you decide to go deeper tonight? What if you decide to climb higher? What if you decide to add another day? What if you decide to get up early and, and study for five minutes and study for 10 minutes? What if you decide that studying the Bible is different from reading the Bible. And tonight you felt a difference. You felt a shift in your spirit of what God is asking you to do. I praise God tonight. I praise him right now that you came to this class tonight. I hope you set an alarm to come for part two. Remember part two to this class on how to study is next week. Then on next week, we're gonna talk about when I actually approach the scripture. Now I know the different versions. Now I know the different websites. How do I approach a different scripture? So I'm gonna give you a little preview of what you're going to see next week. We're going to talk about where I start and how I zoom in and how I choose my tools and how I set my pace and how I break down the word one book, one chapter, one verse, one jot, one tittle at a time. I want you to know how to study this Bible until it's down in your soul and it's everything to you. I want you to be able to rightly divide the word of God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for Bible class tonight. Thank you for your mighty power, your mighty presence, your mighty goodness. Thank you for the awesomeness of your sword. You didn't leave us out here defenseless. You didn't leave us out here to fight the enemy by putting up our dukes. You told us to put up chapters and put up verses. You told us to know the books of the Bible and know the authors of the Bible and know how you had one message that went through 1,500 years, how we don't just own a book we own a library and how you were impressing upon the men of God as how they should write and how they should inspire and how they should lead. That's why we can have more confidence than the Muslim has. That, that's why we can have more confidence than the Jehovah Witness has. That's why we can have more confidence than the Mormon has because our Bible is bigger than all of them, God. The history, the power, the light, the anointing, the Holy Ghost that goes from the first page of Genesis to the last page of Revelation and beyond. Thank you, God, for the different accounts of Jesus, his life, his burial, his birth, how he came and when he started and how he was before and how he will be after and where he is right now making intercession. Thank you, God, for your mighty word. I thank you because it's good and it's great. And it's food, it's food for my bones, it's food for my weary soul. Wrap yourself around me, God, until I am in love with your word, until I live your word, until I am strengthened in your word, until I am encouraged in any storm and any battle and any war. It doesn't matter about the virus. It doesn't matter about social injustice. It doesn't matter about climate change. Your word is everything to me. And I thank you for it right now. So God, I want to study. I want to study to show myself approved. I have had seasons of being ashamed that I didn't know your word, that I didn't make time for your word. But there's a shift taking place in my spirit and my priorities tonight. There's a shift taking place in how important I make spending time with you. Prayer is awesome. Fasting is awesome. Singing is awesome. Meditation is awesome. But God, if I'm going to live this God life, then studying your word has got to be a priority to my breathing, to my being, to my movement. I thank you now for showing me now, God, if there's anybody who's watching that doesn't know you, God, has never accepted you, God, God, show them right now that they can't understand your word until your spirit is living on the inside of them. So let surrender take place tonight and let somebody come running to you saying, what must I do to be saved? Knock on the door of their heart and show them who you are, God, until they open up the door and let you in, until they confess their sins and they feel you faithfully and justly cleanse them of all unrighteousness. Write their name in the Lamb's book of life, in the blood of the Lamb. 
The lamb's blood is what washed away their sins. The lamb's blood is what writes their name, that they receive the gift of eternal life. I praise you that somebody right now is giving their life to you forevermore. That somebody is recommitting, somebody is rededicating, somebody doesn't want to be lukewarm and one foot in and one foot out. Somebody doesn't just want to be a church attender, somebody wants to be a Bible student. Some, some Christian believer who already believes in your death, your burial, and your resurrection is renewing the fire between them and your word right now. I love you for this class. I pray for sweet sleep for every person who came. I pray for sweet, perfect peace for every person that came as they keep their mind stayed on you. I pray that somebody will listen to the word as they go to sleep tonight so that the room is at peace. Not, not some garbage on the TV, but your word coming down into their soul, smoothing away the troubles of this day, and preparing us for the unknown of tomorrow. We love you, Daddy. We love you, Daddy. Thank you for the privilege that we live in a country where we can own a Bible, we can own 10 Bibles, we can study it, we can openly meet like this for Bible class. It doesn't cost us our life. So forgive us that we've taken it so lightly. We trust you now and forevermore. Until we come back together tomorrow for more Daily Hope devotion, until we come back on Sunday for more Word, until we come back next Wednesday for more How to Study Your Word. Keep us, lead us, guide us, and love us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank you, Lord. Were you blessed by the class tonight? Did you share? Come on, if you share, you type it on the screen. I shared it. I shared it. It blessed my soul. You know, the trivia we took tonight was knowing the order of the books of the Bible. If you didn't catch that trivia, you go back and play the beginning because I want to see how many of you can answer more of those correctly now that you've been through the Bible class. Remember your homework. Where did Mark and Luke get their versions of the gospel? Homework number two, Learn the books of the Bible in order. Now it's gonna, we're gonna do this for the entire month. Learn the books of the Bible in order. I want you to know these books until they're down in your soul, until you know them the way the kids learn them in Sunday school. I want them to be everything to you until you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. And listen, you just screenshot it on your phone and put it down in there until you get it. And then every day when you sitting in traffic, when you talking to people, you say Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I want you to get that down inside of you. And so that these books of the Bible, and before you know it from Genesis to Revelations, you'll be able to go. I love you, family of faith. If you didn't get a chance to put down your prayer request, please put that down on the screen right now. We want to take the opportunity to pray for you. If you gave your life to Christ, please call me. Somebody put my number in the comments because we definitely want to talk to you if you gave your life to Christ and we want to pray with you. And then if this class is a blessing to you, if you say, this is such good ground. I love Bible class like this. I love blessings like this. Won't you sow a seed of support? Listen, this is our anniversary month and we're asking all of you that are faithful to this ministry to sow an anniversary seed that the Lord gives you to sow that honors the 14 years that he's been asking us to do this. And so go to the hopeone.com, use the name the hope one on the cash app or mail your contribution to the list, to the address on the screen. And so I pray you have an incredible week until we come back together. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed. And listen, you you get those books of the Bible down in your soul. And, and just if you have to, you open up your Bible to the table of contents and you look at it until you get it down in you and it's all over you. And I'm telling you, little by little, you're going to get it. And write them down. Write them down tomorrow. Write them down on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and see how far you can go. See how far you can go. And I pray that before months end, you'll be able to write down all 66 books. Listen, if you want any other slides that I have done tonight, just text me. Text me at 424-200-2916. If you want that list, I'm not sending all the slides out. Let me recoup that. I, I got sleepy and lost my mind. 
if you want me to send you that book of the Bible, I'll send it to anybody that wants it. So you just let me know because I'm not going to be sending out. That's what Bible class is for. If y'all need to go back and rewind, that's what rewind. Somebody say rewind is powerful. Yes, it is. I love you. I love you, family. I pray this was a blessing to you. And I'll meet you back here in the morning for more daily hope devotion, more daily hope devotion. Remember, this class is only as powerful as you love it, as you you memorize it, as you study because of it, and as you share it. If you have not shared it yet, you type it on the screen why somebody should watch this